Welcome to class number two, twice as good as class one. And we start at 1.30, that way we're not the one o'clock class, although a couple people in here. Okay, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I can prove it, because here's my Perrier. Perrier, refreshing. Where's my check? Okay, so this is the game Nakapuki, I mean Hikaru Nakamura versus Vessel and Topolov. If there ever was a good versus evil match, we're seeing it right here. Although I would have told you five years ago it was evil versus evil. But actually, Toplov is a good guy. Okay, and as you all know, not you because you're a kid, but evil beats good. That's, that's the real world. That's the world you don't know about. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Donald Trump. Okay, so this position should be a draw, obviously, frankly, but the players have no time. So it's a blunder fest. And this position, black played bishop to d6, and Hikaru made a very good move, a move you wouldn't suspect if you were playing for a win. What move would be unlikely if white was playing for a win? I accept two answers. Well, I guess I'll have some period. They're not answering. What's that? Wow, that was a good, that's a better answer than the real one. Rook c5 hanging the rook would be what? Right, but like a, a normal move from a normal person, no matter how evil. Right, trading pieces, you're not going to win, but he did trade pieces and he did win. So he took on f6, and this gives you a passed pawn. Now again, this follows my rule, which is when it's opposite color bishops and there's rooks on the board, it's always a win. Now that's not true, but that's my rule. You know they say all rook and pawn endings are drawn, they're all, mine is they're all winning. So, yeah. So... I guess my rule is correct because he won this position. This position should be a draw. But after the move, the very strong move, what, why did White do that? What's his next move? Very strong move. With Close. You said the right piece. Okay, five. Or Getting closer. H five. Now you're talking. Yeah. Okay. And this has a very serious threat, which mm -hmm. Topolov didn't see. So that's bad. If he did see it, it would still be hard to stop. You guys are like, well, that's an obvious threat. Ridiculous. Okay. In this position, black only has one good move. So this ain't so easy. King g7 loses immediately to rook h7 check. And then you play king f8, and I play rook h8 check, which is basically what happened. King e7, I play rook h7, and you might lose that. I mean, you, you really might lose that. Yeah. You might lose that. So even if you see the threat, it's hard to stop. Yeah, see, they can't stop it. Yeah. By the way, I want to complain about all this stupid commentary. I don't mean the commentary by the commentators. Their commentary is not great, but that's okay. The people in the chat, you're the worst. Okay? And I, and I know the worst. Okay? I've lived with the worst. But you, you guys in the chat, you're like, oh, look at that terrible move they made. Yeah, because your seven computers said so. And you had time on your clock, and your friends told you the answer, and the commentator told you it was bad. Okay, and when you guys play, you don't make legal moves. All of you. Let me give you guys an example. We had a tournament here on Friday. It was a quads. Okay, quads is in sections of four, ergo quads. And there were four sections. In the top section with the best players, the best, the best, Jerry, the best. In round two, one of the games ended in one minute. And I was like, what happened? And he said, my opponent blundered a knight on move four. That was the top quad. And, the, and then the last round, I was called in because the person in check moved their king also in check. This was board one of the top quad by the players who were winning the tournament. So the best players can't make legal moves and hang a piece every move. When these guys make a mistake on move 60 with one second on their clock, you're all over them. Then when I say, what should you do? You're like, I don't know. But if you had your computers on, you would know. Then you oh, that oh, obvious move. So what's the obvious move here for black that doesn't lose? There's only one answer. Ain't so obvious, is it? So what Akaru did was practically very strong. He made these really difficult threats to meet. Topolov had seconds left and couldn't meet them. Okay? The only good move, since nobody can find it, is rook d7. And now I guarantee you won't take the rook because it ain't there. And obviously, frankly, if it was Black's move, that should be, even some of you guys would draw that. Some of you. Because the bishop draws against a rook, so bishop and pawn should be pretty easy. I'm not saying it is, but it should be. Okay? And then, you know, if you check, I move my king. You probably should probably go there and get mated in one. That would be funny. 
but this would be better. And then, okay, you, you get nothing. And you could do this, also nothing. Yeah. And actually, you could do this to win my rook that way. That would be funny. Okay, actually, I guess Nakamura will promote to a knight. That would be true to myself. Then he'd go here and he'd say, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay, and then that would also be a draw. Okay, so rook d7 is a relatively easy draw based on the variations that we looked at. But he played f5. The idea of f5 is to play bishop e5. Okay, and then if you take on f5, I play king g7. Safe and sound. Okay, who sings that? Capital Cities? Yeah, don't sue me. Yeah, you're the music guy. You don't know Capital Cities? Terrible. That song was like a top 20 song for like a year, like three years ago. Yeah, come on, man. It's a pop song, so it's your favorite. Okay, so Nakamura won easily with, with, easily. Rook where? Rook D7? Yeah, Rook H8. And then top left is like, oh, if I defend my Rook, you take it. And then you go here. Man. And then Nakamura knows how to be with the bishop and a knight, so black resigned. Exactly. There's somebody who got the joke. Okay. You know why Nakamura's never been to our chess club? No, I'm serious. This is serious. Do you know why? No. Well, I'm three good, so that doesn't matter. Because if you go into our tournament room, you've been in there, we have extra queens on the board, not extra knights. As soon as we get extra knights, he'll be here in a flash. Okay. So it's hard to tease Nakamura and make fun of him because I'm showing you blitz blunders. That means his opponent made them because he's good at blitz chess. The truth hurts. Okay, so this was pretty funny. This is Fabiano Grishuk. Um, Fabiano's white, and players are getting into time trouble, but not yet. They're getting into time trouble. And black played bishop takes h6. Okay, as usual, the people with the engines and the grandmasters and all... Uh, cheating. They were like, what? What's Fabiano doing? Ridiculous. However, from a human perspective, it actually looks very reasonable. Now, what the commentators didn't point out, because that would make it a bad story, was if Caruana did play the correct obvious move, the correct obvious move for white, Bishop takes H6, the computer says black has a big advantage. So, they were like, oh, Fabiano played this horrible move. He missed everything. But if he had played the right move, the computer didn't like his position. By playing the wrong move is really tricky. So, okay. And I believe he missed Black's defense, not that he misunderstood the position, which is okay. You know, they're playing a 20-minute game or something. So he took on G6, sacrificing a piece. Mm -hmm. If it had worked, they'd say, wow, what a genius. But it didn't work. So they're like, what's he doing? He's crazy. Okay. So Black took a piece. Threatening the queen on d2. So he took back. Now, white has a very serious threat of rook h7. Very serious. It's pretty serious. Okay, so what did black do? Knight Who? Knight f8. Knight f8. Recommended by which Danish grandmaster? You've only heard of one. Name the one you've heard of. They haven't heard of any. So They're yelling at home. Him, rawr. Bent Larsen. Okay, the Great Dane, that was his nickname, even though he didn't live in Denmark. Now what are you going to do? And, well, now Black's up a piece. This is why I tell my students, don't sacrifice a piece, then you're down a piece. Okay, so Knight F8 was the only move, otherwise White's winning. So maybe he missed Knight F8, maybe he saw it and thought he had a big attack. Okay, he has a big attack. Okay. Computer says it doesn't matter, computer just defends perfectly. So they're like, oh, what a terrible piece sack. Okay. Now, in the same instance, um, Topolov, I think he was actually playing Caruana. I'm pretty sure he was. He sacked a piece in one of these tournaments a few months ago in St. Louis. You know, one of these, you know, quick. And, and the kind of like, oh, terrible, because the computer didn't think. And then Topolov just rolled him up. So, like, oh, okay, that was okay. Okay. So, yeah, Black's up a piece. So, the truth hurts. Yeah. And eventually... He didn't do the Feingold gun. He did the, the actual Alekhine gun. I couldn't believe it. It took him a while. There we go. The Alekhine gun. Not as good as the Feingold gun, which comes from Detroit. So, yeah. And then, okay, Black's up a piece and Black's better. So, man, tough, tough tournament. Yeah, this looks like I'm playing white because white's getting some stuff's happening to him. 
Yeah. You can't take the knight because your rook's pinned. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he resigned because if I take your queen and you discover check me, I, I take your rook that you discover checking me with. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so black's up a thousand pieces. Okay, so Fabiano got crushed. And they were like, wow, what a terrible piece sack, horrible. If he had won this, it was great. So, okay, so that was very tricky, but knight f8 was the winning move. Okay. Ah, so yesterday Archer was playing in a tournament and he got to a king and pawn inning that I thought was probably winning. And it was his move. And I was watching and he played the move d4, which I didn't see. And I was like, ooh, that's a good move. And then he won. Probably other moves won, but d4 was the best. Remember when he did that? The best, Jerry, the best. Okay, however, while you were playing that king and pawn inning, I was watching this king and pawn inning, trying to learn about king and pawn endings. Okay. And this is Nakamura Topolov. In this position, let's see if we can get a 4-0. Let's see if we can get a, a unanimous verdict here. Which side has the advantage as playing for a win, white or black? Black. What? Black. Black? You. Black. 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 Yeah. Oh, just a second. Yep, I got a text from Wesley Snipes. What did he say? Black. I mean, that's I mean, sort of right. He said, always bet on black. Oh, wait a minute. He said he has to turn his phone off. He's on a plane. What passenger is he? Wow, class isn't as smart as usual. He's passenger 57. 57. Okay, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a horrible class. Okay, uh, Wesley Snipes, don't, don't sue me. Also, you're in jail. I don't care. Okay, is he still in jail? He's out. He's out? Oh, okay. In that case, I like you, Wesley Snipes. I can't make my other Wesley Snipes joke because I'm not allowed to make that joke. But if you watch a lot of Chappelle's show, you'll sort of get it. Okay. So in this position, Black's playing for a win. The problem is, you ready for the problem? How does Black win? That's the problem. So White's plan is to move his king back and forth. That's the plan. What's White? What's Black's plan? Win. Well, okay. So, well, that's defended. That, the f5 pawn is defended by the bishop, so I uh, can't. Create a pass pawn. Yeah, so the only way to win is to play knight c4 and take the a pawn. After knight c4, if you like to take the a pawn, you might win. If he doesn't let you take the a pawn, you'll get to a king and pawn ending that might be winning. Let's find out. Knight c4. All right, so this is the critical position. Can we let him take the a pawn and draw anyway, or can we take the knight and draw? Looking at me doesn't help. Still doesn't help. Probably try to take the knight and draw. You said probably. That's good enough for me, right? That's what I would probably try to do. Okay, yeah, takes the knight is correct. What's the only way to try to win? B takes or D takes? Let's make it unanimous again. So we, you can vote for green or red, because B and D sound too much alike. I won't understand you. Which way should black take and try to win? I just said green or red. You said D or B. Or I don't know what you said. Red, red, um, and ha, ha, ha. We had two reds, a uh, um, and a ha, ha, ha. Okay, now it turns out he didn't really, he wasn't finished talking. He's, he's a big Green Bay fan. Nobody? Anybody at home? You, you got it? Okay, he got it. We got one out of four got it. That's pretty good. There's a player for Green Bay. His name is Ha Ha. Yeah, you know what his last name is? You. I don't actually Clinton Dix. Yeah, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Plays for Green Bay. Yeah. So he said, haha, you might have been saying you like Green Bay, and you were saying green. Anyway, so red, you change your answer from um to something? Um, green. Red? Um, green. I'm, I'm You're going back to green? No, red. Red? Okay, red, green. I said red. Red? I just laughed. Um, yeah. I would go with green. Yeah, two to two. Okay, if you take away the green pawn, then you're all talking a badge. You got nothing. I, I go here, and you got nothing. You can't. Yeah, 
I, I, I can move my king everywhere. I mean, you can't, you can't ever win. You have no winning plan. Well, you, you got nothing. I don't know what you're going to do. Now, conversely, taking with the correct answer, red, which is what he played, red. now, if it was black's turn to move, he'd play king d5. And then you lose. Okay? So, you have to be ready for king d5. Don't destroy the place. Okay. King e4. Okay. King e4 stops king d5, but not forever. So here's my question. Let's put the king off the board. Black plays the move king d5 because I said so. Now, what move does white want to play in that position? King c3. King d5, king c3. Now black has to move away from d5. Black moves away, white moves away from c3, etc. Black moves to d5, white goes to c3. So what move did white play here? King d2. If you play king e4, you can't play king c3 now. Yeah, now you're going to lose. Okay, but king d2 draws. And then, yeah. You just don't play king c3. King c3 obviously loses because I go here and it's your move. And what do we call that? Zugzwang. That's right. So he's just hanging around. Teddy KGB style. Okay, what movie? Well, you kids don't know. Teddy KGB hanging around? I seen the movie like 10 times. I watched it three days ago. We don't know. No. Teddy KGB, you don't know. Uh -uh. Rounders. Obviously. What, Matt Damon, John Malkovich, John Turturro, Gretchen Mull. I'm not sure I mentioned her. Famke Jansen. Don't, put your fingers in your ears. Famke Jansen. You know who that is? Yeah, that's see, they they can't listen to that, can they? Too young, they're too young to hear that. Zenia from the Goldmine movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, but she, yeah, Famke Jansen. Famke Jansen. She was a tough guy in the movie. She's like, you got to pay. Then she wasn't so tough when they paid. And, she's like, right. and then there's somebody. Else. Oh, Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you guys are all the worst. Ugh. Yeah, you know, let's yeah, just I end the class. Let's just end the class. Never saw Rounders. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, Mar Martin, Martin, not Balsam and not Sheen. Maybe it's not Martin. Martin Landau. You've heard of him because you're old. You've never heard of him because you're young. You haven't heard of him. This now, awesome. wait, you see North by Northwest, the movie? Yeah. We know. Remember him? He shot him. He shot James Mason. He, did. he, didn't, he didn't mean to. He, he was kidding. No. no. No, he shot him. He was kidding. He was just proving there was blanks in the gun. And then when James Mason wasn't shot, he was really mad at Martin Landau. He was really mad at him. He showed him. Yeah, James Mason's tough. You guys never heard of any of these people because you, you got nothing. Not you, the people at home. Not, they got nothing. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, the dictionary, go look up Tabula Rasa. Yeah, okay, get a Latin dictionary. Okay, so go to South America, a.k.a. Latin America. So the king goes back and forth, and when you play king d5, you play king c3. Ergo, Nietzsche, draw. So knight c4 is a draw. He knew knight c4 was a draw. But what do you want him to do? There's nothing to do. Yeah. So he's trying. And then maybe he won't play king d2 and he'll win. But 2770. So king d2. Yeah. yeah what are you going to do? Yeah. And this is common in king and pawn endings. Your opponent wants to make a move. And then you want to make a move to thwart it. So you can't play king c3. Here you'll lose. In fact, I think king c2 is the only drawing move. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. I'm right for once. Yeah, and then draw. Ah, people playing accurately. I don't like it. Okay, I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah. Okay, this was incredibly good. Now, when Super GMs play and the game's over, Rufus and Doofus go to the internet. Those guys suck. Rawr, I'm mad. Okay, this was opposite day. They were like, wow, these guys play great. That's what the commentators were saying. I was like, what? Yasser was like, this was an ingenious rook and pawn ending. White played perfect. He's moving instantly. He's praising him nonstop. I agree. Obviously, white's better. Let me hear two reasons while I take a nap. Why is white better? Well, isn't the opposite of opposite day not opposite day? Correct. So it's not opposite day. Correct, which means it is. I showed him. Black has a... Why is white better? Why? 
No reason? Correct. Okay, and also he said so, and his opponent's like, that's me. Yeah, king's on e4, your king's on e7. And more importantly, in this position. No, nothing. I mean, my rook's a million times better than yours. Your rook is here. Ah, oh, I've never been so mad. If your rook was here, okay, then black's fine. So black's rook is defending a pawn, and white's rook is attacking a pawn. So you can't, like, this rook's going to go here. That's ridiculous. Okay, it was ridiculous for a while, then he activated his rook. Okay, so black played king d7. White played a move you would never think of. None of you would ever play it ever. Rook c7. No, because you thought of that. So that's wrong. Okay, even though you were kidding, you were still wrong. Rawr. Okay, so in this position, black can't do anything. So white fixes this pawn so it can't move and plays h3. That's good for one reason, which I just told you. The other reason, if black activates his rook, which he did, he doesn't attack both pawns. By keeping your pawns on different ranks, I don't think a rook can attack both of them. That would be cheating. And if he goes to win the pawn, black can't push his pawn. So if black decides he's going to give all his pawns away and win the h-pawn, well, his pawn's going to be on h4 instead of h3. That helps white. So h3 makes a lot of sense. Okay. Then f5 makes sense. Okay, c3, because black can't move anything. So he's like, it's your move. And black's king is stopping the white rook, and black's rook is defending this and stopping the king, but black has to move. Because he played c3, putting him in Zugzwang. The computer says king e7, probably he didn't want to allow rook c7, so he played king d8. And he said, now you can't move. See? He kept his rook here, defending the pawn, and his rook here stopping the king, and his king here stopping the rook. These guys think they're so good. King g5, attacking the pawn. King e7. He's like, wait, if I take that pawn, black activates his king. Black can activate his rook, so I'll just chill. Your move. There's no hurry. You guys are always in a hurry. Dominguez is like, hmm, should I win the h pawn or the b pawn? I'll just move around until your flag falls. Then I'll win one later. Okay. He's not doing anything. Okay. Now he decides to go the other way. Okay. He's going to play king here. And then when the king moves over, he'll play rook c6. And he'll come win these pawns. Okay. And Wesley stops him. And he comes in. And now white's coming in. Rawr. You can't stop him. So black, this isn't going to work anymore. So what did black do? Rook H8 defends this. Okay, then I take all your pawns. Rook A8 is the right idea. Played Rook G8. The same idea as you, but I can attack more pawns this way. Yeah. Okay. So we take, and he's like, wait a minute. You can't take my H pawn. I'm going to take your H pawn. Okay. So they take each other's queenside pawns. And they did. Except white took the H pawn while he was doing that. So white's up a pawn, and this pawn can't be defended. It's attacked twice and you can't move it. Okay, so he took it and took that. Okay, now white has two pawns to one. If white loses this pawn, it's obviously going to be a draw because we'll both queen our pawns and sack our rooks. So white defended his pawn. No, it's too hard. Rook c5. Rook c5, yeah. Okay, and black played here. And white moved his king and said, let's kind of move our pawn. Okay. Now, you guys would not, wouldn't play king a5. You guys like attacking things. So you, you could never play king a5. It doesn't attack anything. Obviously, when I move my pawn up, I'm going to need my king to help. So I don't move my king backwards. I want to move my king forwards. I can't move forwards because my pawn's hanging. So king a5 is the best I can do. Now I can push my pawn. And if you check me, I can go to b6 and still push my pawn. Okay, king f5, he's coming around the mountain, right? Got to do something. Here he comes. Okay, check. Yeah, and now he played king b5, moving his king up here, and then he put him in check. Now, every move wins, but this is the best. The reason it's the best is white wants to do this, and if white plays b8 queen, black will win the queen. You agree? 
So white played rook here, and now black won't win the queen because I go here. So now if you take my pawn, I do this. And as I like to say, the truth hurts. Yeah. So after rook c4 check, what did Wesley do? Resign. Resign. And then Yasser was like, wow, white played perfect that game. He did everything right. And I was like, yeah. yeah that's why he's ahead in the match, playing good. Yeah. So that was a rook and pawn ending where white was better on both sides, ended up winning a pass pawn on the queen side and pushed his pawn. Very nice end game play, unfortunately for Wesley. Okay. This was the funniest game ever played ever, except for all of other Nakamura's blunders. This one's, you know, up there. One time, was it Peter or was it Homer? I think it was Peter. You know, family guy? He said the most insane thing ever. And Lois said, of all the crazy stuff you said, this one ranks around the middle. Although it could have been Homer and, and Marge. I'm starting to think it was them. But of all the crazy things Nakamura did, this one ranks about the middle. Okay, White's completely lost because Black's pawn is going to queen and Black's taking this pawn and this pawn's going to queen and so forth. Also, he's in check. So he would just king. Okay, so obviously knight takes g3 wins, then I win. And the computer says like plus seven. Like you just get two queens. And white gets no queens. White's not queening anything. Okay, Nakamura played a horrible move, which still wins. B5 check. Because tricks are for kids. He's hoping for this. Okay, well obviously white didn't do that. White played king c5, and now the... Now, he shook his head more than he's ever shaken it before, which is probably not true, but it might be. Wow, he shook his head a lot. Well, now I'm going to win your b5 pawn, and I'm going to queen my b pawn. Like, so that was just, like he moved his b pawn where white could take it. Now, Nakamura made a mistake again because he likes to play dominoes. It's the domino effect, right? No? He likes to eat dominoes? Nobody likes to eat dominoes. Okay. Okay. So... There's only one thing, by the way, nobody pointed this out. The commentators, the article I read online today, they don't point this out. There's only one thing white can do to get counterplay. Take the b5 pawn and queen the b pawn, which he did. So black should play. Black should play. Knight c3. Yeah, and black's just winning. Tax the rook, defends the pawn, and we queen our e pawn. Knight c3 wins easily. Yeah. But he took on g3 because that was, I mean, he was going to take on g3 and get two queens. Yeah. Now we thought white was winning, but black's actually still better here. And the reason black is better is that the main variation that somebody gave, white queened and black didn't, and black got pawns on the seventh rank and was still better with his king, knight, and pawns on the seventh rank. That was some crazy main variation. Okay, but that variation didn't happen because Nakamura was very busy shaking his head here. He couldn't believe he played b5 and the guy took it now. Yeah. Okay, so the game concluded with Nakamura playing brilliantly to get his knight back. Yeah, knight d4 was a really good move. If you take the knight, I queen. And if you go here, my knight gets back. So his knight's back. Yeah. And this is a draw. And the reason it's a draw is I play king d6 and I attack your knight forever. This is something very important for you to know, like as an instructional, you know, kind of, is when there's a pawn on the seventh rank and anywhere, except, well, these side pawns win, because there's no, there's no, you can't go off, can't go off the board. And the knight's in front of it, it's a draw. Like if there's nothing on the board, it's still a draw. We just keep going in front and you can't, you, nothing you can do about it. Now here, black wants to win, but black can't sack his knight for the pawn. He just gets his knight chased. So they agreed to a draw here, but let's pretend they didn't. This is just, everybody, everybody has to do this. Yeah. And if White wants to lose, he can lose, but probably he doesn't want to lose. So the, ga the game would have concluded that way, but they agreed to a draw. So both sides were a little bit lucky, but I mean, B5 check was, was crazy. It just has that one trick where you win the rook and the guy didn't take it. He was like, ah, horrible. Yeah. I've never been so mad. Okay. Yeah, this was funny too. This is Wes's game with, with Dominguez. So Black's up a pawn, but that's the important pawn. Yeah, that pawn's serious. Okay, and here Dominguez played rook a3 check and Wesley blundered. But they had no time, so it's okay. 
So white's probably winning. Probably winning. What's the winning move? Probably winning. Hey, you guys suggested legal moves. I like that. Yeah. One of them who suggested was winning. That was good. Okay. Should have played knight e3. Okay. Now, a more important question. If it was white's turn to move here, what would he do? Rook takes f6, yeah. So... I'm sure you guys can stop that. It got real quiet in here. There's only one move, I think. Yeah, you play rook takes e3, and then you then you check and take the pawn, but then you're going to lose your pawn on v6. Oops. Yeah. Ugh. Whoa, I shouldn't play king d4 and hang my rook. I'm the worst. Okay, now I'm not the worst anymore. I was the worst. Yeah, now when I take on B6, my A pawn's looking good. No, I mean, yeah. if I turn the engine on, I'm guessing plus eight. Come on, come on. I was guessing. Come on, we'll get to eight, I'll turn it off. Because it'll go past eight when it gets there. So. Okay, so obviously white's winning because the numbers are too high. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's, it'll, get, it'll get to some crazy number in like an hour. It'll be like mate and 36 or something. Okay. So Wesley could have played knight e3 and won the game, but that wouldn't be fun. Why am I showing you that? So he moved his king, and now black checks forever, and if white doesn't want to get checked, it moves his king where it doesn't get checked, then black plays rook to the e file behind the pawn. And then black might win, because black's up a million pawns. So the game should now be drawn. Check, 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 check. But Wesley wanted to win, so after a million checks, where he stopped the guy from moving his rook to the e-file, Wesley let him move his rook to the e-file. So he moved his rook to the e-file, and now Black's winning. And Black, I mean, Black's up a lot of pawns. Okay, so he didn't want to draw, so he didn't get a draw. He showed himself. Okay, so Wesley played knight h4, and Dominguez almost played king g5. He, you can see him do it, but then knight f3 check wins the rook. Okay, so then Dominguez decided a draw was a good result, and they repeated. Always repeat. Okay, but actually, after king h5, uh, hold on. It's Wesley Snipes again. Yeah, he said the bet on black. Yeah. I don't know if black's winning for sure, but, I mean, black's up a lot of pawns. So, yeah. But he would just, like, they both had seconds left. They're like, okay, draw, this game is over. Not, not the fighting spirit that he needed for king h5 and winning. So, as you can see, every move was a mistake. That's why they're the best players in the world. And I was complaining last class, not really complaining, I was explaining the reason you see all these mistakes is they have no time on their clock. So I recommend to my students not to play so fast because they make a lot of mistakes. Okay, this is the round one game with Magnus and Ding. And... Obviously, white play G takes F3. Okay, now, when you have computers, everything's easy. Without computers, everybody in the world would blunder here. Everybody. All of you and me, and then you go on the streets and say, excuse me, do you want to play chess? And they'll be like, no. And you teach them how to play chess, then show them this position, and they'll blunder. No. Everybody. Okay, what's the most obvious move for black? I know I would play it. I guarantee I would play it. Rook G1 check and what? Infiltrating, penetrating. The okay. That's what he played. That's the best move. That's not the most obvious move. Rook G3. Attacks everything. Man, Rook G3. Rawr. And the reason he didn't play Rook G3 is it's not a good move. It's a good reason. Yeah. And now White has an amazing move. That gives you a hint. If I didn't say amazing, you wouldn't get it. You're still not going to get it, but that helps a little. That would be amazing. Amazingly bad. <laughs> you have to have a reason why you're making a crazy move, not just because it's crazy. Well, right, but you have to give me the reason. Like, oh, that wins everything. Rawr. Anybody? 
See, and these guys actually see this stuff, even though they're playing quickly. Nobody else sees this stuff, except the commentators are using an engine. Then they see it. Now you're all talking a badge. D4. Yeah, and both players saw that. That's why rook G3 wasn't played. So if you take with this pawn, I attack your rook, and I threaten bishop takes D6. If you take with the other pawn, I play C5. And if you take it, I play d6, obviously. And if you don't take it, I could take this and win a bishop. If you stop that, I might go c6 and queen. So yeah, d4 is a good move. And both players saw that. That's why he played rook check on g1. Okay. Now Magnus blundered. The engine says correct play is this. That's the engine. And then draw. That's the engine line. Magnus played for the win, a.k.a. the loss, and played bishop e1. Okay, and Ding played rook h1. You can't play bishop takes h4 because it's pinned. So he played king e2, threatening bishop takes h4. Then he took on h3. And you can't play this d4 line anymore because your bishop can't take on f4, your bishop's on e1. So you just take it. So, okay, bishop f2. Now... If it was white's turn to move, maybe bishop takes is good. Maybe I trap your rook. Okay. So here, uh, Ding blundered, and he went from a win to a draw. And in fact, it's the obvious move that wins. But he didn't do it. Okay. He should play rook, F, rook h2, king f1. H3, and now everybody thinks bishop h4 wins for white. That's probably why he didn't do it. Right? You see how he white wins a piece? But, check, rook moves. And good luck stopping h2, h1. Good luck. I wish you luck. You can stop it too. You can resign. That'll stop it. And then black's winning. Black. Black plays h2, h1. You can take a bishop while you're doing it, but who cares? Okay. So after rook h2, in, in, in this position, after rook h2, computer says, like, black's plus 5. Because he just has his passed h pawn, and you can't play bishop h4. And I don't know if Ding missed that, that he, can't, he probably thought bishop h4 wins my bishop. I can't do that. So he just made sure that that wouldn't happen. He unpinned his bishop. King f6. And now it's a draw again. And that's chess at the highest levels. That's also chess at your levels. You know, your game's pretty good. You make one bad move. And, uh, so Magnus was drawing, made a really bad move that he's lost, really bad move from Ding to draw. Okay, so he played king f6, breaking the pin. King f1. You can't, like, get your rook out of there now. You can't, because your, your pawn's not defended anymore. Like, if you go check and move your rook away, then you just lose. Okay. So he has to play... Rook takes f3, king g2, and now black has one move that draws. Which one of my fine students can find it? You, you're a fine student. Rook g3 check. Rook g3 check. You can't let me do this, but you can't let me do this. You can't, so you, so you don't. Rook g3 check. And now nobody can do anything. No, white has to watch those pawns, and black's bishop is useless. So, so they just move their king back and forth and draw. And then draw. Nobody can do anything. So both sides made a mistake, and it was a draw. That's fair, right? It's a little fair. Okay. It's the kind of unfair fair. Okay. So this was, this was the funniest, I think. Um, and actually, whenever somebody blunders, and you're like, could you explain that blunder? I'm like, yeah, they're no good. It's easy. But when it's like 2800, then I got to think what they were thinking and explain. And sometimes they interview them and they explain. Sometimes. Okay. And I'll try to explain this, but it's not easy. Not easy. So if you say, why didn't Magnus play the winning move? If I had to guess, I think he saw the winning move and thought his move was more winning and he missed something. I'm trying to figure out what he missed. I'll give you some explanations. Okay. So the game was equal and then Dig messed up. Okay. And after queen a6, 
Now white's winning. Okay, now this is why Ding is good and you guys are sitting in a class, you know, like falling asleep. Because even though white's winning, what black has to do is make it the toughest so that white has very few wins. Now, first question is, what is white threatening with the move queen a6? What could, if white could move again, what would he do? Queen a7, and then I mate you, queen g7 mate. Okay, and also queen a6 defended my pawn on d6, which I sort of like. Okay, so he stopped queen a7 check. Well, there's a knight on e5. Bishop oh, yeah. e6. Yeah. Huh. You. Yeah, bishop b6. Yeah. If you take the bishop, which some of you would do, checkmate in one. So probably don't do that. Yeah. And the queen on a6 is stopping that. Okay. So Magnus played the only move that wins. Knight d7. I think he's losing if he doesn't do that. Okay. Now he has a very obvious threat that even you guys can see. No? Knight f6 check, winning the queen. And coincidentally, your bishop's attacked a thousand times. Okay, and you can't mate me on f1 because I'm still I still move backwards. Okay, well knight f6 is serious. He's not kidding there. Okay. So he played queen f7 as recommended by you. You have like, you know, you pick that. Now, white has a very obvious winning move and did not play it. Very obvious. You'd play it in a one-minute game. Or maybe your flag would fall because you're not saying it. Most obvious move on the board. Now we just did that. Your knight was on e5 last move. That was just for repeating the position. Always repeat, so I agree. Okay, I said it in the last class, but you guys weren't here. Well, you were. Always take everything. That's my rule. Take things for free. That, that well, queen takes bishop is not free. Your knight's saying on d7. Knight takes bishop, wins a bishop. Knight takes bishop, grab a bishop. So I'm sure you saw knight takes bishop, because it takes a bishop. And then you win, you're up a bishop. I mean, you're up a knight, because you took a bishop. So after knight takes b6, Magnus would have won. So why didn't he play it? There's two possibilities. He played queen c4, okay? And black played the only move. If you take my knight, I checkmate you. That's better for white, if you want to write that down. If you don't take my queen or my knight, I take your queen. So white, so black played. Queen takes queen. And so when Magnus played queen c4, there's two possibilities of why he played it. Actually, there's three. Nobody mentioned the third one, although I thought of the third one. Magnus might have incorrectly thought that after knight check, king here, pawn takes... He's threatening mate, and he's threatening c5, which obviously wins. And you can't take my pawn because I play rook g8 mate. So maybe Magnus did th saw that when he played queen c4, and he forgot I go check and check and check, and the truth hurts. I think without rook f1 check, white's winning, but maybe he didn't see rook f1 check. Okay, or Magnus thought that after king h8, that this is mate and forgot the black queen was still on c4. Or what actually happened. I don't know. I, I, they might have asked him, but I didn't see the interview. He might have thought that what he did was winning. Only legal move is king h8, right? And now, if you play king g8 or king g7, I play knight takes rook check, and then I take your queen. And black played in this position. King h7. Yeah. And now you just repeat and it's a draw. Knight g6, draw. So what did Magnus miss? There's three possibilities. He thought that this was winning for white because he didn't see rook f1 check. He thought this was winning for white because he didn't see queen takes rook and thought that was mate. Or he thought what he did was winning and didn't see king h7. Because if you play king g7 or king g8, you lose. I don't know, because knight takes bishop wins a bishop, and Magnus's move does win if any of those things are true that he misunderstood. I don't know what he misunderstood, because it's a dead draw. Now you think you need a draw. So I'm assume if Magnus had 30 minutes on his clock, he would have played knight takes bishop and won, and I don't know when he played queen c4, I don't, I don't know. 
but he missed something. Okay, and when there's checks and captures and checkmate and past pawns, you can't say, oh yeah, I missed that. Because then the game's over one way or the other. If it's the other way, that's not good. And so, again, when I show you these kind of blunders, usually it's my students and it's games in the other room and I'm like shaking my head. And when it's the world champions and the best players in the world, it's because they have two minutes on their clock. And then I can show you lots of stuff. Or it's Morphe versus Doofus. That I, Doofus did this and Morphe did that. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. I don't. So that was, the, and now today, not for you at home. You guys be quiet at home. They're playing five minute in the other stuff, Grishuk and Caruana. And these guys are playing uh, 20 minute today. They're playing two, I don't know what, this is a weird tournament. Like three matches started one day and this match started two days later and finishes two days later. Also, Carlson pointed out in one of his games, they were in time trouble twice at the other boards. So they're playing their 30 minute game and 10 minutes into the game, the other people are all have one minute left because they're playing 10 minute. Then that game would end, they take a break and come back then they're in time trouble again at the end of their game. So like twice they're hearing these guys blitz it out. and yeah. Yeah. So that was funny. Yeah. So everything's sort of funny. It's a very strange Super GM tournament. They're treating them like we get treated. You know, you go in there and Archer and Ocean are like throwing themselves on the board. And you're like, what? Why are you guys so noisy? Yeah. They're doing that in these tournaments. You know, those top players are screaming. By the way, there was a complaint at the last tournament. Kasparov was too noisy. No. Kasparov was complaining because there was an argument in like a nons game. And like they were arguing, talking, and Kasparov's like, quiet, I'm playing, I'm Kasparov. So you don't see that Super GM tournaments when you guys are playing, you know, you guys are like talking during your game. Okay, but if the Super GM tournament, it's got to be quiet. But okay, if it's both sides have 10 seconds, there's no increment, no delay, there's going to be a lot of noise. Because the game's going to end in a suspicious way and people are going to argue. And then other people are in time trouble playing and they're used to quiet because they're 2800. Not anymore. Got to get down and dirty with us. Right, Archer? Yeah. So he's like on the floor. He's like, what? I'm not sitting in this chair. Rawr. Exactly. There was one of these at this tournament where, like, was the bishop on the board or not? And if it was, then it's... They could have forfeited Dominguez for using two hands, like, three moves in a row. And they would have forfeited him. They said if so didn't move. Once so moves, they can't forfeit him. So, like, but obviously they have, like, four seconds each. So so's not going to say, oh, excuse me, would you forfeit my opponent? Yeah. There's... Also, so wasn't even sitting. So I started standing up and moving. He's going all crazy. Yeah. What's funny is, if you go to the Rufus and Doofus on the internet, I've never seen in Super GM tournaments, they, and I'm like, well, every tournament that was ever played ever before like 1995. Like, increment and delay is new. So when Super GMs played in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and it was blitz chess or 10 minute or slow, and they both had 10 seconds left, that's what happened. But now, if you have 10 seconds left, you have a 30 second increment, you, you, you like take a nap. And you make a move and you have 40 seconds. And the players now are like, wait, I have three seconds and I, I, I'm gonna have two and then one and then zero. And I can't get any time. So now they go crazy at the end because they're used to having less than 10 seconds and not caring. But I'm old enough where if I had 20 seconds and my opponent had 20 seconds, I just, Moved instantly. I wasn't, hmm, that move seems okay. Let me think about that. And those guys are doing that. And Topolov should know better because Topolov's around my age. So he played a lot of chess where there was no increment, no delay. So he knows. Now, yesterday, surprisingly, even though Topolov is sort of outclassed and blitzed by Hikaru, they, they tied yesterday, I think. So in the 30-minute and 20-minute, Hikaru beat Topolov. I think in the 10-minute, they tied. So Topolov, yay. So if Topolov goes 12-0 and today, he'll win the match. Top love wouldn't even beat me 12 and 0. Like 11 and 1, but not 12 0. All right, you guys did well. Very few of you fell asleep. Only half of them fell asleep. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Now, next week there's no class because we have a two day tournament. But when I say we, I mean the GCA does. And then the week after there's no class because we have a two day Thanksgiving tournament. Yeah. So the next class on Sunday is in three weeks plus tax. If you come Sunday, you'll have to like watch a chess tournament. You don't want to do that, right? No. Yeah, no, anything but that. Yeah. All right, see you guys in three weeks. Now make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>